Hello everybody. Happy Monday and welcome. And we're going to be working again uh, with some exercises, some stick control formulas. And last week we did, or the week before that, we worked out of uh, Master Studies 1, uh, The Stone Killer. And this is sort of an expansion on that particular uh, concept. We're going to be working with groupings of three, groupings of four, and groupings of five. Now, do we all know how to, uh, I, you probably already know how to do the triplets, the threes, one and the two and the three and the four and the, and the groupings of four as one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. How many here, um, first time with groupings of five. Do we understand how to count the groupings of five? And it'd be nice if everybody could just say hello and how are you and good day. Okay, first thing we're going to do is work with groupings of three, which means I'm going to do three rights and three lefts. One, two, three, one, two, three, over and over again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, I do this at first very slow, and my sticking height or my sticking position is the, uh, where did I go? My sticking position is a full stroke. It's in a full stroke position, and I'm going to be doing free strokes. Now, you notice when I do my free, my free stroke, I, when I throw the stick down, I don't bring my hand out and bring it back in. I don't know what that's all about. Perhaps somebody could tell me. Whatever that is, I don't know. To me, I think that's just a waste of energy and a waste of time, and it disrupts the flow. But we have, we're going to start with three rights. One, two, three. Full stroke. Before I make the next stroke, I come right back to that position. It's a very slow exercise. One, two, three. Now, the formation that I'm going to put that in is an eighth note triplet. Now, the way I count eighth note triplets would be one and the, two and the, three and the, four and the. And occasionally, I'll count a triplet instead of that way, or one triplet, two triplet, excuse me, or one ta ta, however you count them. I'm so accustomed to counting one and the two and the three and the four and the. However, occasionally I'll, I'll think of a triplet as a grouping of three and count it as one, two, three. Now, whatever works for you, works for you. There is no right or th there is no wrong. There's just different ways. And I prefer to count the triplet as one and the two and the three and the four and the. And what I said, Occasionally, I count it one, two, three, and that's for subdivisional reasons. For example, if I'm doing three against two, one, two, three. I'm thinking one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay? Now, the first exercise if you, is the formula in the stick control book that I've come up with, and it was inspired by uh, Joe Morello's Master Studies. And it's a grouping of three. I make R become three rights. R would be this. L would be three lefts. Now notice, when I'm playing the right or when I'm playing the left, if I have to make an adjustment, I will, but I try to make my right hand and my left hand sound equal. So, with that formula being said, we're going to do this in the full stroke position first. And we'll do it slow. It's like a warm up exercise. And we're going to do the first line of stick control book, which is right, left, right, left, right, left sequence, which we make R equal three rights, L equal three lefts. So here we go, nice and slow. And let me put the metronome on, uh, let's say, I'm going to use the metronome as each count of the triplets, 72 maybe. I'm going to count that as one and the two and the three and the four and the. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two. And it takes a little time to do this. So I do the first line in the full stroke position, which is this. And I'm going one and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four and the. Now, I'll do that for a while. I'll actually do the first line and go directly into line two at that position. And notice how slow it is. I'm giving my body a chance to, to warm up. Okay, now I'm going to do line three, which is two rights and two lefts. Now, the right is going to be, the two rights can be one and the two. And then the left, three and the four. And the one and the two. And the three and the four. And the. Now, let me go back. I'm going to put the metronome on 60. And this time, I'm going to use 60 as the quarter note. That's going to be one, two, three, four, and the one, two, and I'm going to do line three, three two rights, two lefts. One, two, three, four, same position. Two, three, four, one, two, three, line five, one, two, right, right, left, left, left. so forth and I'll do that for for quite some time and my objective is to do the whole page like that it takes time it's time consuming unfortunately we all don't have that time to sit here on the drum pad for two or three hours a day and uh, make a living and go teach and make some videos and work things out on the drum set so you're talking 24 7 with the sticks in your hands and that's what it really takes to be uh, not, I don't want to use the word great, but uh, a drummer who, who has the passion, who wants to learn and become better and better and better. Always with the drumsticks. I mean, you have other things in your life, you know, maybe you're, you're uh, I, I call it a garage drummer or a basement drummer, or you just do it on the weekends, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. It's something that you love and, you know, you have fun. And that's the most important part as well, having fun. So what you actually do then, you know, you spend as much time as you can. It's just another thing to do, another kind of exercise to help you. But you have to remember now when you're doing this, from that one point, and my, all those strokes sound the same, the left hand. Now occasionally I'll get this. Now, the left was not right. I do, Sonny. The, the left hand was not equal to the right, so I made that adjustment. So let me, you know, we're in the full stroke position, and so you're not going to want to play that fast. I mean, if you want to play it fast, that's not a problem. Hold on a second. Let me see what's, what's clicking here. I don't know, something is just flashing on the computer, on my computer. That's okay. So now, let's say you want to do it a little bit faster. And, you know, this is a workout. Getting it faster. So what I want to do is take it now a little faster on the metronome. Instead of 62, let's go to 100. And it's not that fast, but now when I'm playing at a, a higher speed, my starting position is going to be a little bit lower. So it, it's I'm not going to have enough time to bring it all the way back here consistently. So here we go. We'll try it here. One, two, three. Now we go. One. It's line one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and the two and the three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Line three. 
three, two, three, four, one, two, what, and right, right, left, left, equal sound. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now I'll do the whole page again that way. And like I said, we all do not have the same luxury as to do that uh, completely every day. I mean, that's all you'll be doing is practicing as opposed to playing and creating. So, now let's do this. Let's take it a little bit faster. And again, you know, so far we, we visited the full stroke position and sort of the half stroke position. Now we're going to make it faster. We're going to go closer to the drum. So, let's take it up just a little bit. Let me just loosen up because I'm not totally loose. That's pretty good. One, two, three, four. One. That's at 120. And we bring the sticks down. I'm going to do line one. One, two, three. Look at the heights. Sounding the same. Line three. One, two. Here we go. Line three. One, two. I, I brought the sticks up a little higher towards the end. And that's what I'm talking about a workout. It's a physical workout. And the most important thing there, well, one of the most important things is not to create any tension. You know, at a speed, it's, that's not a very fast speed, but at a speed like that, when you're in the, the full stroke position, you're working. So when you work like that, you do not want to uh, create any sort of tension at all. So now, that takes care of maybe the, the, the full stroke, the half stroke, and the quarter stroke. Now I could sit here and, and, and do for a half hour or so uh, the page five of Stick Control Book. And I mean, what's the sense of me doing that when you understand it? You want to do this, it's gonna help you take what you need and do it, okay? Now that takes care of the, the, the grouping of three, which is, like I said, when I count, one and the two and the three and the four and that. What I want to do next is do the grouping of four. Now, again, the counting system. I, I refer to the counting system as a 16th note count in 4-4, four, four, which would be 1 E and the 2 E and the 3 E and the 4 E and the. And again, we start up here. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a. So I'm doing four with the right, four with the left. Now, let's let's take it up. I'm gonna make this 160, and I'm gonna make each tick, let me see if that works, each tick a count. One, E, and a, two, there you go. So let's do line one. One, E, and a, two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, E, and a, one, two, three. Nice and relaxed. tell you I'm using this metronome it's kind of hard to stay in, in, inside of that pocket especially when I'm looking around because my mind is not wandering but I'm making sure that the sound is okay and uh, where I'm at and counting and trying to discuss what is occurring with my hands so it's kind of hard to stay in the pocket if I was just silent and focused and zeroed in on the metronome uh, you wouldn't hear the metronome I make the metronome disappear. Watch, I'm going to make the metronome kind of disappear. When I hear the metronome, that means I'm out, out of sync. Occasionally, it goes in and out. You see that? Do you understand that, gentlemen? And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat, and we'll try to address the questions. No questions? Okay. Not a problem. Makes it a good afternoon. Now, all this stuff 
is, is the stuff that uh, Joe Morello and I worked at on. We went over and over and over, explored all these avenues. And uh, I mean, Joe Morello was just a master of a hand technician, which he studied with George Lawrence Stone, the author of Stick Control Book. And I'll share a story with you about uh, the uh, the Joe Morello. It, it, I forgot. I was distracted. I'm sorry. When I first started to do on my site on the drum set live online lessons, we were working constantly at a, at a stick control book on page five, six, and seven. And a little bit of every, a little bit of someplace else once in a while, but the majority of the time was uh, in a stick. Excuse me, in a stick control book. And uh, one of the students, after three months, four months, said, "Are we ever going to get off this page, off these pages?" So I said, "Okay, we'll do that." So I take them to someplace else, maybe uh, the Gary Shafey patterns, and uh, his. Uh, time functions and I, I explained to him how the page went and then we utilized again the stick control book and uh, kept going again and again and again like that for a couple of lessons and then he started to beg me please can we go back to just page five six and seven so the page the stick control book has in my opinion everything in there everything it should be with you at all times well that's a little bit much, but it's with me all the time. And uh, it's just a great book. Let's go back to the 16th. And I'm playing the 16th now. Uh, every tick is a quarter note. So I guess you could say I'm using this as a 16th. One, E, M, a, two, E. Let me put it up a little bit. Let me go to one, 180. Every tick is going to be a count. So I'm going to start with line three. I'm going to do uh, on line three, there's two rights and two lefts without the metronome and in, without tempo, I'm going to explain it. One E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the. Now, can you see the association from this for this exercise, the triplet exercise and the 16th note, note exercise from uh, Joe Morell's Master Studies, The Stone Killer? Can you have see how it's associated? Okay, 180. There you go. One, two, three, bang. One E and a two. Just line one. Three P e and a four. One, two, three, four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Line two. Right. Three E. Nice and relaxed. One E and a two. Ah, three E and a four E again. One E and a two E and a three. Line three. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a right. Right. Left. Left. Right. Right. Left. Left. One. Two. This is line five, four E and a left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, and left, and sorry, left. Now, you do as much as you possibly can, when you can. It's a good exercise, it's different. I do have a drum set application for this particular one. Where I substitute, instead of playing my right hand on the snare drum, I play my right, my right parts on the bass drum. So I have, now I have two voices going, the bass drum and the snare drum. Then I add the hi-hat, one, two, three, four. And uh, with my right hand, I'm playing a variety of cymbal ostinatos. And that's all in Gary Shafey's patterns series, time functions, okay? Now, if you want to come back tonight, that's going to be a good thing, because that's what I'm going to demonstrate, and other stuff. Now, groupings of five. Sonny, do you know how to count the groupings of five?
to the quarter note. What it, I'm going to bring it down to 60. This is not easy. This is going to be a little more difficult. The groupings of 5 at 60. That means every time I hit, every time the click, for every click, in between the clicks, I got to get spaced five strokes equal. Understand? Just a little warm up. That's alternating the fives. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah, you're not sure. All right, let me explain. I'm counting equally. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's a grouping of five. But it's wandering someplace. There is no tempo. So if I put the tempo, like I just did, uh, at 60, that's the pulse. That's going to be one, two, three, four. So every time I that pulse, there's going to be five strokes equal distance. To the next tick. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. That. I'm gonna do alternate strokes. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I'm, I'm pronouncing the accent so you can hear the pulse. Do you understand it now, Sonny? So I try to do that as the formula. One, two, two, three. So I got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. One, two, three. What's that? I can't see it. Let me put my uh, my glasses on. Sorry. No, 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 no. All right, a grouping of five is, I'm going to do it with one hand, and I'm going to put an accent on the first note of the grouping. It's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I don't understand that counting system, one, two, three, one, two. You can use that, but that gets a little confusing, in my opinion. What works for me is one, Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And this should be the metronome. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can go. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one. So you can do that. But I don't like to do that. I just do the fives. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I get accustomed to doing that because eventually when you go to groupings of ten, it's just double that. So you're not going to go one and two and three and one and two and one and two and three and one and two. And you can. Something is freezing here. You freezing on me there, uh, Sonny? Am I freezing? Is the screen freezing? Ugh. So let me do the fives. To the left. count that one two three one two but like I said it gets confusing because if I'm doing tens if I did one two three four five one two three four five one 
Here, let me do some fives and some tens. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It gets confusing. So just keep it, if I were you, I mean, it works for me. It might not, what you're saying, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, gives me a bit of a different feel. I like to have it flowing, and it gets a little confusing. So now, let, let me go backwards a little bit here and what we've accomplished, hopefully, so far today in this short period of time. We did the grouping of three as the formula. R equals three rights. One, L equals three lefts. Line one would be line line one would be one two three one two three but or one two we'll do line line one I'll do the whole I'll do the whole line line one complete so I have to go through the cycle four times one two three four one two three four one two three just did line one. Okay? Now, that was the grouping of three, the triplet, as we made R equal three rights, L equal three lefts. Then we did it with the grouping of four. You could call it a quad. I don't know what you want to call it. You quint quintuplets. I mean, not quintuplets. Quartuplets. It's a grouping of four, four sixteenths. So I make R equal four sixteenths. L equal another four sixteenths or four lefts. Put them into sequence, and I'm going to do now. I'll demonstrate this with line three. One e and the two, three, four. Right, right, left, left. Right, right, left, left. Right, right, left, left. That was line three complete. Yeah, well, you probably have better <laughs> computer skills than I do, Sonny, believe me. I spent a lot of time the last two years on the computer. And hopefully that's over with. That I have everything the way I set, just about set the way I want. Okay, so now, if you'd like, uh, first off, where are you from, Sonny? And are you available tonight? My, my lesson on my site is going to be 8.30. PM Eastern Standard Time. You should try to come out and check it out. I don't know exactly where you're from. You could explain to me where you're from. Tell me where you're from. US, Europe, Australia, Canada. Because tonight we're gonna to do also I've had quite a few requests for the buzz roll or close roll. It should be demonstrated though on a snare drum as opposed to a drum pad. I had to develop that. The reason why I'm not hitting that now is because when I do that, it tightens up your hands. So I don't want my hands to be tight right now. I got them pretty, a little bit loose. Okay, and another up and coming lesson is gonna be the uh, 16th note triplet, single strokes. from Toronto. Okay. Good. Alright, so just to let you know, that's where we're going to go. What, can you come to the lesson tonight, Sonny, at 8.30? It would be nice. Have you been to the lesson site yet? Boy, it gets really dry in here. Questions to this point? No 
questions? Okay, you've been to the site. You coming back tonight? That would be nice. Try to come back tonight. And if you'd like, if you'd like, I, uh, you want to contact me, Skype, we can talk about you and, who, you know, exactly how long you've been playing and what you've been working on. Let me give you my Skype contact. So if you want to contact, well, no, this, that's not the whole thing. Hold on. That's my Skype contact. Okay? Do you have Skype? Even if you just want to make contact and occasionally call and ask a question, I'll be more than glad to uh, have some interaction with you. All right. It's uh, just about time to close up. That's about all I wanted to do today. You have any questions? Questions, Sonny, before I close it up? Okay. Hopefully I helped you out some more, gave you some information that could be useful for you. Uh, so then I'll see you this evening. 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. You're welcome. Tell all your friends and bring your questions, hopefully. And call me on Skype if you'd like. We can talk a little bit when I have a chance, okay? No questions. Hopefully I helped you somewhat. And I'm going to stop broadcasting. You have a good rest of the day. Uh, and hopefully you can practice somewhat.